Hello, my name is Gary. Welcome to my video. This is Mecha Godzilla, my gray metal planer that I've shown in some videos before. It has a three horsepower motor, but as we'll see, I'm not able to get a three horsepower cut out of this machine. When I compare the chips that I'm able to get, this is about the largest that I could get out of the gray metal planer. And when I compare that to the chips that I could get out of my seven and a half horsepower metal shaper, we can see that I'm not getting a chip that's almost half the size. Something's different here. So trying to work through the cuts on this, I found a limitation on the machine. And so I was interested is, is that legitimate or is that something that is wrong with the machine? So let's look at what happened first of all. As it cut across at one point, the belt started slipping. So this isn't a horsepower issue, this is just a drive issue, and the belt was slipping on the upper pulley. So I got a can of belt dressing, sprayed the pulleys down, and that basically solved the problem. So I was able to go through. But what I learned is that probably in, in a steel like this, which is 1018 cold roll, lousy stuff for machining, Probably an eighth of an inch is about the deepest cut that I'm going to get out of the, this machine comfortably. Anything more than that, I'm risking the belt just stopping and spinning on the upper pulley. So we see from experience that I'm able to cut 1018 steel, which in an as roll condition has a Brunel hardness of about 135, and I'm able to do about an eighth of an inch cut with 12 and a half thousandths feet. So, Going through, Brunel 135 1018 has a power factor of 0.69. With that feed rate, the feed factor is 0.99, very close to 1. And I'm removing at that feed and that depth of cut about 0.45 inches per minute. So when I multiply all those together, I find out that I should be able to do the cut with a sharp tool with about three tenths of a horsepower. I was using a roughing tool. It's a little bit worn, so add about 30% onto that. So the cut itself was using about four tenths of a horsepower, and that's about the most that I could get out of the machine. If I tried to get more, the belt would slip. So I go back to my American Machinist Handbook. And I find that inside there's a discussion of how much power I can transmit with a leather flat belt. Well, this is not leather, but we can still use the formula to see what interesting things we can find out. So the first thing I need to do is get a couple dimensions on the machine. One of the key ones is the diameter of the small pulley. And when I measure the diameter of the small pulley, I find out that it's 7 inches. So a 7 inch pulley has a 0.65 factor associated with it. The belt itself, if I measure it, is 1 inch wide. And how much I can transmit on a 1 inch wide belt depends on how fast the belt is going. We'll see in a moment that it's going about 730 feet per minute. And I'll show you how I get that. That gives me about 1.3 horsepower for the width of the belt. This pulley is above that one, so there is a factor that goes in there. I need to know the distance between them. When I measure the distance, it's 5 feet. That gives me a factor of 0.65. And then, of course, the belts are shifting back and forth, and that gives me another factor that goes in of uh, maybe 0.6 for a shocker reversing load. So the only thing left to do is show how I calculated the speed here. That's fairly simple. I'm going to fire up the phase converter and make a little bit of noise. But I'm just using a Sterrett rotation counter 
and I'm going to see how many revolutions I get in 15 seconds, multiply that by 4, and then using the diameter I can convert that to belt speed. So we'll do a real quick check on that. revolutions in 15 seconds is 400 revolutions in a minute on the 7 inch diameter pulley. Multiply that out and you end up with 730 uh, feet per minute belt speed. From that I can go into the table and look up and get that that belt should be able to transmit about 1.3 horsepower per inch. It's a 1 inch wide belt so 1.3 horsepower. When I multiply all those numbers out I found out the power that I belt will transmit without slipping is again around four tenths of a horsepower. So what I'm getting on the cut and what I calculate for the belt slipping, the numbers are similar. Okay, they're not exact out to four decimal points, but neither are all the numbers that factor into this. So there's pretty good agreement between the two. So what that tells me in the future when I'm doing cuts on this and I have any doubts about it, I can go back, I can get my book out, I can calculate what the power required to do the cut is. And if it's under about four tenths of a horsepower, I should be able to do it. If it's over that, I probably cannot. And I can back away from that with a little bit of safety. So that's something that I now know about this machine. It's useful knowledge for going forward. One thing, every machine in the shop constantly learning learning new things about it, learning what their limits are, and these are things that just come with experience and playing around. Now I know something more about this one. You have fun and play safe in your shops.